Hey there guys, what's up? Gary Noden here for GenVFX. Welcome to our next tutorial today. We're going to be doing, it's not a fast one, but it is quite a nice one. Um, it's uh, something that I've been wanting to do inside of Blender for a while. Haven't found a way to do it. And essentially it's being able to rotate a profile curve uh, that you're using on a, another curve. So the reason why I've been wanting to do this in Blender is because it's nice to have those beautiful, smooth, animating backgrounds. Uh, that you can either, you know, the ones, the sort of things that you can buy or sell even on um, Adobe Stock or on Pond5 or wherever. All these lovely places in Vato. You know the places I mean. So let's get into this. Let, very quickly, I don't need that. So I'm going to get rid of that. Normally I'd use that as my base for my geometry nodes, but not today. So what I'm going to do is, and if you haven't done this already, I think what you need to do, go to preferences. And if we go here and we type in curves, Turn on your curve extra objects. That would be a good start. Okay, like this. And the reason for that is because we get to lots and lots of wonderful things that way. If I go add curve and with the extra objects on, I go down to knots and I go down to torus knot plus, I can create a torus knot. But obviously plus means we can do a lot more things to it. So we can increase the curve resolution, uh, the segment resolution and so on. So if I set the segment resolution to four, and the curve resolution here to five. And that's not enough. Ooh, that's getting a bit better. We don't need a huge amount of knots and we don't want the surface. We literally just want the curve. So there you go, we've now got this lovely curve knot. And so that's us done, that's our curve. We don't need anything else. Might need another curve in here eventually, but I just wanna show you how I do this whole thing in geometry nodes. So let's go back here to geometry nodes and with our object selected, press new to create a new, uh, new uh, node. And we want the curve to be the source of our uh, everything, of everything we do. We want to create a, a mesh that goes around that. So in order to do that, we have to go Shift A in here, and we go uh, Curve Operations and Curve to Mesh, and then that basically will put us any curve that we want for a profile curve around it. So it's like a path, essentially that curve to mesh. And so I now need to create a profile curve. Now, as I said, I could use something in here, make something in here, but what I want to do in here is in fact, I actually just want a standard primitive. I'm gonna use a star. I'm gonna pop that into the profile curve and it's obviously far too big. So let's set this to 0.6 and this to 0.5. That's still too big. So that's to 0.3 and that's 0.25. That's getting better. And so what we need to do is just, again, I just don't want it passing through itself. It doesn't really matter, I suppose, but it just looks nicer when it doesn't. Let's push this down a bit to here. There we go, that should be just inside. There we are, that's nice, pretty. And let's increase the points here. And if we just put on the wireframe so we can see what we're getting, and that's that's not too bad, but we can see exactly uh, where, our, where our polygons are, where our, all of our quads are, and that's nice. Now that's all fine. But what I need to do now is, what I want to do is be able to rotate this around. Uh, so what, this is the thing, it's, it, it is really this simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add into here a geometry uh, operation and a transform geometry, I'm gonna drop that into here. And then if I rotate this on the Z, it rotates that around the curve. How lovely is that? So what you can do is you can set up, you have to work it in relation to how many points you have. So uh, if your points are say, Let's, uh, let's say we've got 36 of those. Let's make that a smaller value, smaller num there. There we go, so we have num nums, there you go. What we're doing is 360 divided by that. That's our full rotation to get a loop. We only have to rotate it by 136th of 360, which is 10. So we want control of this. So if I go here and go add, and let's go search, and let's type in Euler, rotate Euler like this. And we put that into the rotation. Now you'll see that we get accurate value. So if I press zero and then I press 10, they'll be the same. And they are, that's great. So we've got that value. And now I can take this and do this and drop that into there. I mean, I can link that directly in as well, but it's just nice to just have, I don't know, I, I, I quite like the, the rotate Euler in there. We now have these, because we've plugged those in, we've got rotate by rather than rotation. And we can just keyframe this. So if I go to frame, let's just set this to uh, one, two, five, and let's go to the dot like that. That's good. And let's set the keyframe here of zero. Let's go to one, two, six, and set a keyframe of 10. Now what you'll find is that this rotates, but it doesn't rotate linearly. 
it rotates uh, with a, a curve. Let's go to animation, you'll see what I mean. If I select our object and then pop open this, and then we have a look at this. Let's press uh, Control and Tab to change it between. I like this Control and Tab when you're in here. Changes it between the um, uh, the dope sheet. So Control and Tab basically toggles between the dope sheet and the graph editor, which is really very very quick and useful. I've mentioned that before actually. One of my very earlier ones. I think I was animating a fish on a path, a little goldfish. Anyway, we want to change these tangents to linear. So we press T, which brings essentially up the tangents, and then we press L and that gives us linear. So TL basically. So now if you look at this, you can't really see on this one, let's zoom in. We've got a perfect rotation, one tenth, which is brilliant. If you think that's too slow, which I think that's too slow, I'm gonna change that to still a multiple of 10. So I'd have to say, let's change this to 20. Now again, it would be nice to be able to get a number and add it. We can, we can go show sliders and then we can go here to here and we can type in say 10 or 20 or 30. So I'm going to type in 30 and that changes the value inside of here rather than trying to drag it and get it in inaccurate. So that is now rotating 30 degrees between one and one to five. And that gives us a perfect little loopy loop, loop the loop. So I'm going to press zero. I think I've just pressed zero. That's zoom. I've zoomed in and let's go to the camera view. Just press N here. So I'll press N in this one. And let's uh, go to view and let's uh, camera to view. So I've got control over the camera like I would do in any other piece of software. Nice, nice, nice. And let's zoom in here and go, right, let's find a nice angle. So we can really see these loops. That's, uh, so also let's go to the camera and let's change it from its regular 50 to about 24. There we go. So we can get a bit more nicer perspective error. There we go. At the moment as well, what you might notice is let's just uh, set this to uh, this viewport to zero so you can see them. If I play this back now, let's just move this across here. There we go. There you see it's a nice, nice rotation occurring across all of those shapes. Really lovely. I like that. Really pleased. Now it's all a bit sharp. We need to make some alterations here in order to be able to get it so it's not quite so sharp. First we need to do is set smooth. So if we go to shift A and go SMU uh, and we've got uh, set shade smooth and that will set it to be shaded uh, smoothly. If I turn off the wireframe if I just, there you go, shade smooth on and off. See, that's how it looks properly without any shade smooth on. And that's how it looks with it on. I'm going to put the wires back visible. Uh, I'm going to add a few other things in here as well, because what we need to do is we need one more. I want more information. So let's go into uh, mesh operations and let's go subdivide mesh. So let's just pop that in there. And that adds an extra uh, subdivision in along the height of each of these triangles. And the reason why I want that is because I'm now going to do a smooth, uh, but I need an extra information in order to be able to make sure I kept the kept this sort of like diamondy shape. So let's do another subdivision surface, drop that in there. And now you can see we've got kind of, if well, let's just turn these off. I've got light, slightly smoother edges. So now when we play this back, look at that. It's like syrup. It's lovely. In fact, if you knock that, if we bring down these points to say 12, um, it kind of has that uh, look of that scoopy ice cream stuff that comes out of the big nozzly thing in the ice cream vans you see at uh, theme parks and seasides and things. So that's that's basically it. Of course, obviously, you now you're kind of you're kind of stuck. Uh, you can't add a shader to this, so you need to add information so you can actually add the shader to it. So let's go here, go search, let's go set, and that should give us material. So we can then pop that there. And then if we change this to uh, render, you can see we've got a little bit of lighting on that. Let's change it from EV to cycles. Shouldn't be too much slower. That's good. Let's go down here and now we can pop a material in here and let's call it, let's call it, I'm going to call it ice cream. Why not? And then I go in here and then I link that to ice cream. And then I can sort of like start messing around and putting little bits of color and stuff and subsurface in there. So let's put some subsurface. Oh, there you go. That's ice cream. If I've ever seen it, let's go to shading. Go to here, press zero and we can really properly now work in the shading area. So right, that's lovely.
There you go, that's basically it really. But what you can also do, and this is why I wanted to do this, uh, again with geometry nodes, is, right, you've got a setup, you know it's working. Let's change that back to EV for the render. And you say, right, well, that's all fine, but I want a different curve. I want a different curve. I want a curve that I make. Okay, so let's go into, go to curve. And let's create, uh, let's say, a polygon curve. There we go. And we, let's increase the number of sides to six, like so. And then let's let's move this object, not the actual in edit mode, in object mode, because we want the origin state in the middle. Otherwise, it'll be off center rotation. And well, let's just say I'm going to work on this. I want to work on it after I've seen it in the actually with the geometry node setup. So we go back to our geo, and then here we've got our uh, polygon curve. So let's let's bring this in, and let's put this into the geometry there. And you'll notice it doesn't work. Why? Because our curve needs to be turned into a 3D curve. So Otherwise, here. it won't actually work in the 3D, 3D environment. Now, if I'm correct, we can now go back into our shot. Let's go back into it up here. I'm having difficulty seeing right now. And there you are. You can see how, how it's working. It's definitely there. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll move this over here. See, it doesn't affect it in any way or form. And then we can say, right, let's work in edit mode. Let's take this point here. Let's move this one in. And so you can start to see how it changes the shape. This one here, bring this one in. And you see how it changes the shape all the way around. Let's take these, let's take this point and these points. And let's scale those in X. So let's bring those in. And let's select all of these. Let's make those smooth. Let's go up here, let's do a bit of do a bit of manipulation of the tangents. See these have gone too far in. Let's bring these down push these ones out a bit so they look a little bit more balanced, almost butterfly-ish. And then we can see here, this shape is now all over on our thing. Let's just make this whole thing just fundamentally smaller. There we go. Like this. And then we can go back to our, uh, where, where, where was it in geometry? Nodes? Yeah. And then if we play this back now, obviously this is just rotating around only just 10 degrees, it's going to reset. So what we'd have to do here is make do a much bigger length of the animation render to get that sort of shape that we want. I'm just going to put this back to where I was when we change it from a shape to a 2D shape to a 3D shape. There we go. I think if I change this to a 3D viewport, I could see here. Here we go. So let's scale this down until that fits. There we go. And this is now a six sided thing. So the rotation in this would be 60 if you wanted it to be perfectly symmetrical. What I can also do here, of course, is I can subdivide everything and then take all of these inners. S, scale those in, we're getting the star shape, you see. So we just, uh, you know, this is the thing that we can just automatically create anyway. Um, let's just do a rotate on that so we get to another edge. There we go. And I think also we can set the handle to handle type to uh, automatic. There we go. So we've got a nice curvy shape, a bit like a cog, I suppose. And then what we can do is we can go back to our geometry node top of our object. Let's pick this object. And then we can set our final rotation here at one, two, six, set that to 60. And then if we play this, Let's change it to smooth just for speed. There we go. So when it reaches the end of this here, it reaches 126, it'll just loop back. There we go. So it's like a lovely, lovely looping animation. And then with fancy lighting and stuff, you can have all sorts of fun. So that's it, really. That was it. Just, just that. Um, 
you know, it doesn't have, if you really want to go back to the star, go back to your star. And also that is also quicker, you notice, because obviously it's something that's entirely geometry nodes is always quicker. That also still is a loop. Oh, lovely. Um, right, so there you go. That's it. Nice and simple. Doesn't take too long. Gotta love it. And then I will obviously render this and stick it in there. Um, this has been great fun. I've been using, I think I mentioned it. In fact, I mentioned it in the last video, which wasn't really a tutorial. It was a review video. And it was the fact that this is all being done on a Lenovo P620 that I've been loaned from the guys at Lenovo for trialing it. And uh, oh, it's such a lovely machine. It's going to break my heart when it goes. <laughs> it's only on a loan. Um, there's no sponsorship or anything like that involved. It's literally to see what I thought of the machine. And all I've been doing is telling people how wonderful it is because it is, it is wonderful. So I'm sharing that with you now. Um, I, most, I thoroughly recommend anybody having a good look at the Lenovo stuff. That's uh, essentially an animated background. Hello, and on BBC Two tonight, you could be watching something completely interesting. On PBS this evening, we have Shadows of the Warrior Hunters. I don't know, I'm making up ideas, obviously. Shadows of the Warrior Hunters. Actually, that's not too bad. I'm drifting. Why do I keep doing this? Look, thank you so much for putting it with me uh, again on another tutorial. Uh, it's It's been emotional. And um, I will see you on the next one. Listen, take good care of yourselves, guys. Have a lovely, lovely summer. If you're going on holiday anywhere, make sure to take sunblock. Just make sure you've got proper sunblock on. So you have a little bit of colour at the end of it. A little bit of a nice tintage. Um, but go have a great summer holiday, hopefully. And um, I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye.